brand new cherry flavor is one of the newest flavorings on Netflix. I watched it, finished it. I don't know if I liked it, hated it, or loved it. Let's talk about it. This miniseries kind of reminded me of Midsommar. I watched Midsommar, had a pretty unpleasant time throughout the whole thing. It reminded me of having the stomach flu where I didn't like anything I was looking at, but once it was all over, it stayed with me. And so by that standard, I guess it was impactful and maybe I should appreciate it. And now part of me likes Midsommar a lot. And brand new cherry flavor has a similar feel, although I never felt like sick watching the show. It definitely gives you an uneasy vibe here and there. The show's protagonist is Lisa Nova, played by Rosa Salazar. She's an inspiring up and coming director who made a short film so damn good, a director slash producer already took notice in Hollywood. Lou Burke is the character, he's played by Eric Lang and he's just having a ball with this role. He gets to play a uptight, douchey producer who, who knows he can take advantage of new talent. So Lisa and Lou meet up, they come to an understanding about how things are gonna work with their film, how she's gonna be the director, he's gonna produce the thing, they're gonna find top tier talent and so on. Things go south very quickly though when Lou starts to back out of that commitment, leaving Lisa feeling used, unwelcome, and pretty pissed off. The first episode is by far the most traditional and it's pretty boring, honestly. It's a slow burn show for the first couple, but I think it's definitely worth your time if you're into twisted, graphic, weird storytelling, which uh, I guess I am. That's me now. Like, that's where I'm at. Thanks. Thanks shitty movies in the last decade. You're making me go way out of my comfort zone. And by way out of my comfort zone, I mean there is stuff that happens in this that uh, on paper sounds disgusting and upon watching is even worse. I'm being vague because I went into this fresh. I didn't see a single trailer. I just started watching it because the poster was gross and looked interesting and captivated me. And Netflix series are far better than their movies. So I knew going in, this could possibly be really good. For those that have seen the show and just want to hear what I thought more in detail, I'll get to that in a little bit. I'll let you know. So the entire premise of the show is Lisa's burned by Lou. She wants to get revenge on him and she finds unconventional means to do that in. There's some gross imagery, there's some jump scares here and there, there's a kind of a weird vibe to the whole thing, it's a little unsettling. So if that sounds like something right up your alley, I would absolutely recommend this show. If you get squeamish easy, if you don't like the sight of a couple of gory things per episode, I would maybe walk away from this one. For me though, this worked. I like the 90s aesthetic, I like the surreal images we get in the film, the colors, the, the, the neons, the things of that nature. It all kind of worked for me. Is it perfect? No. I'd still prefer to watch like Stranger Things season one, a little bit more up my alley, but this was cool. It was different and I'm all for different right now. I'm, I'm so sick of the stale shit that's coming out these days. It's nice to have something that's outside the box, even if it's like way outside the box. Like there's not even a box anymore. You can't even see that thing. I also have to point out Katherine Keener's in this. She plays a character named Boro. Fantastic performance. I think she's so good in this. Uh, I just props to, to Catherine for the performance. Anyway, I'm gonna jump into the spoilers now just for a little while. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend going in fresh, shut this off, walk away. It's okay. It's not gonna hurt my feelings or the algorithm. I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, for those that have seen the show, if there's any of you, I'd, I'd love to hear, please put in the comments without you know being too spoilerish for, for people that haven't. The throwing up the cats, what the fuck? Like, it goes on a little long. I mean, I get it. We don't need to see it every single episode, do we? But it just never fails. The camera always is just so proud of the fact that Lisa can keep puking these things up. Once they moved her, uh, her, her G spot onto the side of her body and cats started coming out that orifice. Oh my God. And then to take it further, they even start making love through that thing. What the hell is happening in this show and why am I still all in on it? I thought Boro's character was so interesting and the backstory with the Panther and all that history was awesome. It was such a good reveal. The fact that she had a family that she hadn't seen in 10 years and she just casually shows up pissed off poisons them and then goes back to work. Amazing. I, I, 
the body jumping stuff, the way that the show slowly unpacked episode to episode, as I'm talking about it, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it now. Anytime you can mix in supernatural stuff with some sort of a god entity though, that I eat that up. That's like my favorite genre now. Rosa as Lisa was probably the weakest part for me. It was so hard for me to feel connected to the character though and really understand like where she was coming from. I get it in an, an extent, but there was just something about her that was kind of off. And I, I know why by the end, it's because she's, you know, related to this mythical beast creature. So she's not all there. She's, she's kind of between both worlds type of a character. Uh, it's just, it's just hard for, to relate and to connect to someone like that. I really hope this gets a season two because there's definitely more story to tell. The shot of the woman eating her own eye after cutting it out is probably the grossest and most favorite thing of the episode for me or of the series for me. It's so fucked up. Again, if you've seen it, let me know in the comments and what you thought. If you agree with me and thought it was a wild ride or if you wanted to get off after about the second episode, I completely understand that as well. Thanks again for watching the video. Like it if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll see you around. Netflix, what a, what a beautiful mess. Thanks for sticking around. Join me on Patreon if you haven't. It's $1 a month or five or 10 or 20, whatever you wanna give. You get access to an exclusive show called The Cringe. It's, it's satirical, it's funny, it's silly. It's, it's for your entertainment. Or you can hit that join button right here on YouTube and become a member that way. You also get access to the same stuff. I'd appreciate it, it shows your support and it, it keeps the lights on here. All right, take care.